Andy, last weekend the Colts had a cup match on Sunday and they won. Yeah, they did. Um, I was among many of the others that came to watch. In fact, uh, they wrote me in uh, to be the physio. Uh, I've known them, the, the group of boys for a little while, so they know that uh, I'm a physio as well. So it, it gave me great pleasure to be part of that. Um, and those that came to watch will have seen a, a yet again another entertaining game of rugby and one that saw the Colts um, win comfortably in the end um, with some fairly direct rugby um, taking on a fairly physical mm. uh, Western Hornets side who um, by all accounts had, had gone through the season undefeated and you could see why that was um, you know they were you know they were quite a good side themselves and they certainly knew um, what the, how they wanted to play their game um, but it's quite as often if you meet like with like you then find out what other skills they've got and, and our guys won through and it was it was good to good to see and, and I said to them afterwards, you know, the club needs a bit of feel good at the moment and uh, if it's them that's going to give it to us, well then, you know, let's get everybody behind them and uh, see how far they can they can go on this uh, the Colts train or whatever it is that Matt Stiles <laughs> refers to. So, um, okay. yeah, quite happy to support that. So they've got Bedford at home in the next round, I think. Yeah, they have. It's semi-final to be played probably on uh, Sunday the April 17th. Um, and that'll be a tough game. Uh, Bedford, you only have to look at the sort of history of the competition. Um, they have certainly been in the final and usually won it when they've been there. And if they weren't in the final of that, they were in the final of the plate. So uh, they take this competition quite seriously. Uh, there's lots of debate going on both on their own website, uh, on other websites about, um, you know, sort of how level the playing field it is when mm. it comes to playing Bedford. Um Obviously, up Premiership Academies are not allowed to enter. Um, Bedford uh, make no secret of the fact that their Colts is regarded as an academy, which means they probably do pull in uh, some of the better players who would be of Colts age from some of the clubs around to play for them. Um, and so, you know, you look at our team and, and there is a good number of those who have played at the club since they were seven and eight years old. Um, and they're going to come up against a, a group of players who... Have sort of been roped in at the um, at that age group, so it'll be a tough game for them. Um, but uh, they continue to play like they did on Sunday and in other games. Then um, they, you know, there's no reason why they shouldn't feel com com confident about winning. And if you're going to beat Bedford, you might as well beat them in the semi final and um, and have a comfortable final. Definitely, they played really well. So good luck. So in other good news, we've got some players who've been picked for some representative teams, haven't we? Yeah. Well, obviously. Over the last few weeks, um, on Sundays, there have been county under-20 games taking place, uh, which is something I've had to be aware of with regards to our, some, of our, some of our younger players, um, so that they can perform um, for their county and perform well, so that they subsequently get uh, a chance to, to play divisional rugby. And um, four of our guys have managed to come through that process and been picked up to play in their divisional squads, and that's Ben West and Nathan Thomas, uh, are in the South West Divisional squad, which is great news for, mm -hmm. for us and them. Um, and then Jack Taggart and Andy Gale uh, through Hampshire are involved with London and the South East. So we've got four players from our first team squad involved with Divisional Under-20 Rugby. This year, for the first time, there is an England Counties Under-20, uh, which is geared towards those guys. So, you know, it would be great if one of those four or, or a number of those four can get into that final England um, Counties 20 uh, and that will just give us a real boost from a squad point of view that despite the, the results on the pitch, um, players have been progressing uh, and have um, forced themselves up the next run of, of, of the ladder that, that, that rugby offers. Um, so we, you know, we've got our fingers crossed and hopefully they'll all come out but it, it brings another headache to me because they've got those divisional games to play uh, and I've got to you know, consider... Um, what we do with them close to those games uh, and one of them I think may even be on the 3rd of April which is the day after we play Hinckley which obviously is a is a game that we feel that we ought to be able to perform well in as they're in the division sorry the, the position above so mm -hmm. you know it's, it's a real moral dilemma do I put my strongest side out in an attempt to beat Hinckley or do I rest four of them because they're playing division rugby the day, be, the day after so you know great stuff uh, yeah. which not many other coaches have <laughs> to deal with 
I don't know the answer to that question, <laughs> by the way. Um, now, talking of headaches, it was a bit of a struggle for you getting a team out last Saturday, wasn't it? Is it any easier this Saturday? Uh, not really. Um, you know, we've got a few uh, injuries, a few little niggly injuries, and to, you know, a few people away, uh, and others then um, either unavailable for, you know, unavailable for all sorts of reasons. Um, and it makes it difficult. It makes it difficult to get a squad together. It makes it difficult for those guys that are available. Um, on, on Saturday, for instance, you know, we had no second rows available. Um, Jack Taggart had picked up a shoulder injury from the Tuesday night game and hadn't recovered. Uh, Andrew Canuck's away. Um, ben West, we clearly wanted to, to keep out of the firing line so that he could play for the Colts on um, on Sunday, particularly as he, you know, he'd, he'd limped off two or three weeks earlier with a rib injury. So we had no second row, and uh, Nathan Thomas went into the second row with, with Greg Price. Now, Greg can play in the second row, um, but neither neither Greg or, or Nathan are, are the line-out um, option that, that the other three are. So we were, you know, were down a line-out option. Um, Alistair, would, you know, Alistair had to play a blind side, which he's done a few times. Um, um, and then, you know, right at the end, we had a couple of late call-offs, and so poor old Ollie had to play on the wing again. <laughs> and Ollie, like Westy, had a game on Sunday, so I was trying desperately to keep him out of out of action completely. And I had to ring him at ten o'clock on Saturday morning. Uh, and like you know, the person he is, he he, he didn't bat an eyelid. Said, "Yeah, I'll be there." Uh, and and along he came, and he played a whole game on the on the wing. And thankfully, it didn't. Um, Upset him, and he, he managed to you know perform really well on the Sunday. Uh, and as I say, not a lot of different this week really, with a few injured still. Um, and it's going to be a tough game up at Old Albanian. So you now I'm quite keen that the boys try to really refocus. Um, you know, we're we're a bit like a wounded animal at the moment, sort of limping towards the finishing line. Uh, and I can understand you know why we're like that. It's been a really tough season physically and mentally. Um, and we've got another month to see out, and um, you know these guys have really um, done well to to keep going um, for as long as they've, they've kept going. They have. And it would be harsh to sort of criticise them in any way um, when you know they're, they're either injured or, or illness or unavailability comes along. Um, but I think they can also, if we can just pick it up now for this last month and really give uh, a final good account of ourselves. You know they have sort of gained the respect of. Lots of people from other clubs and people from from this club, and certainly from from me and the coaching staff, for keeping keeping it going for as long. It cannot be easy. Um, you know, we try to buoy them up, but you know, deep down, I'm sure that uh, you know they're hurting a lot. Um, and um, you know, if we can just gather ourselves for this last month of April, uh, we've got Hinkley on the second. That might give us a bit of a boost uh, and see ourselves through uh, and finish this this season. You know, the team's still together, still playing for each other. Um, we'll have achieved something which you can't sort of see written down anywhere. Uh, and that's what I'm asking them to do now, is just give us that last little push um, to the end of the season and, and finish as a group who can hold their heads proudly that they, that they kept going right the way to the end. Yeah, well, they can definitely do that. Thanks very much, Andy. OK. Mm-hmm.